Welcome in. We are Line Change Action Network's Hockey Betting Podcast. I'm Tim Kalinowski, joined by Michael Leboff and Nick Martin. We'll be giving you some best bets for Thursday night's games. Uh, but we're going to, you know, add a little wrinkle here. And we, we, I think we're on the same sides here a little bit as we, as we just kind of got to know each other in the, in the pre-record or the, you know, production process here and, and seeing what we kind of sniff around and may or may not like. So we're going to do a draft style. So I'll just give it to Leboff. You know, he's the veteran here, uh, the, the incumbent, the longest lasting action employee of, uh, of the group here. So he'll go first, then Nick Martin, and then myself. And we will draft some best bets for Thursday slate. Leboff, you are on the clock. Yeah, I know uh, you guys would be lining up to make this bet because we love to bet this team and they never break our hearts ever. The uh, New York Islanders, I like them at minus 120 or better on the road in St. Louis. The Islanders needed to fix a lot of stuff um, after their coaching change from Lane Lambert to Patrick Waugh. But the most paramount thing that they needed to fix was to stop allowing high danger scoring chances and generally just pucks at their own net. Uh, and those defensive changes have been kind of astounding under Wa. The results might not show it, but but the Islanders have, have really trended up in their own zone. The penalty kill is next, but we'll get there. Eventually, you can't fix Rome in one day, Tim. That's what they say. Uh, the Islanders look like they're they're being fixed. They're trending in the right direction. They just need to learn how to hold leads. I think that they could do it against the St. Louis Blues team that uh, all three of us are, are pretty skeptical of. So the Islanders at minus 120 or better, uh, that's going to be the, the first pick uh, of the night for me. I thought that you were going to say that they had to stop blowing leads. Is that not on the list? We'll get there. It's uh, that's that's a really hard thing for this team to accomplish. So I don't want to I don't want to put too much on their plate too early. Maybe we can have that problem settled by uh, the time the playoffs start. Yeah, it's, it is a little too much for them. I, I concur on the pick um, for what it's worth. Nick, how do you feel uh, about Leibov's pick here? Yeah, I agree. I think he used first overall well because, uh, you know, like we had talked about before, incomplete agreement here. I think the Blues are a very overvalued team right now. So I want to keep selling on them. All right. Well, with that, we'll stay with you, Nick. Who's going number two overall here? Okay, I'm happy that I got two because I'm going to go with the under in the Lightning game, Tim. I know you like this one as well. And for me, it just comes down to what I think this Washington Capitals team is going to be moving forward. I think Spencer Carberry's done a really, really good job with the group, bringing them along and having them play a well-organized defensive game that hasn't shown entirely recently with some of their higher scoring performances or higher scoring totals versus teams like the Avalanche, the Panthers, the Devils. But I think those are going to be more the anomaly. This is a really big game in Tampa. I think the Capitals will lean on their defensive strengths to give themselves a chance. But I don't view them as a high-powered offense at all. I think it's been surprising to see some of their recent goal totals. I think those will trend downwards. So I like the under 2 minus 140 in this game. I think it sets up as a really good spot for both teams to play nice, organized defensive games. And this total is just a touch too high for me. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be shocked to see that uh, the Lightning's kind of underlying five on five numbers, you know, are not as uh, reflective of a high powered offense as some people who, you know, the Lightning teams we've seen in the last couple of years. You're basically, uh, when you're taking Lightning overs, you're just basically saying, I hope they get a whole lot of power plays because that's kind of been the avenue with them. And Kucherov also, uh, what he's done this year has, has been remarkable. Uh, I'll ask you, Leboff, you know, judgment day here. How do we feel about Nick's pick? Uh, yeah, I like it because it correlates with what, what I like in this game. I like the Capitals uh, as an underdog because I think that they can get um, the game script to to play out the way they wanted to, which, like Nick said, they want to turn this thing into a rock fight, and they've been very good at, at doing just that uh, and sticking around to this playoff race. So a tip of the cap to uh, to Spencer Carberry for getting this team to to buy into that to that ethos, and I think it pays off here uh, at, at a good price. Yeah, bet 365. And, you know, might as well maybe put them together, under and the Caps, if you want to. Uh little bit of a, a bigger payout on Thursday night. Uh, I'll finish us up here with the Vancouver Canucks in the minus 130. I'd like them up to minus 140 against the Seattle Kraken. Uh, this Canucks team, they've lost three in a row. One of them 10 to seven, that ridiculous game against the Wild. Then they lose three to one of the Avalanche. I just think it's uh, one of the rare times this season where we're able to buy low on the Vancouver Canucks. They just have so many more avenues to win uh, than Seattle. I certainly respect the way Seattle plays and, you know, 
with uh, the, kind of the lack of top end talent on that roster. But I think it's a really good situation for Tockett to say to these guys, you know, uh, you think you're all that and you go lose three in a row. One of them, you let up 10 goals. It's time to dial it in here and uh, take care of business against definitely an inferior Kraken team. Vancouver's uh, is better talent and they have better goaltending. So I will be on the Canucks in this one. I will leave it to the group to decide if uh, I'm warm or cold on uh, on that take. I'm lukewarm to it. I like the Isles more. I think this one's close. I can I can see the upsides for the Canucks with the goaltending and the scoring talent relative to the Kraken. But I, I do think the Kraken are kind of trending in terms of a more competitive direction than maybe they're some people might think so I can at least see why the price might not be, uh, you know, as simple as it looks. Yeah, well, I had the last pick, Nick, you know, uh, come on. Here. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Perfect Arrelli. excuse, no matter what. You would have had the right pick if uh, you picked first, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we, have, we can't all pick the Islanders. Uh, I, I'm going to be on the Canucks here, too. It's It feels like uh, maybe taking the bait, but it's a tricky schedule spot for Vancouver. But they the edges that they have in terms of just scoring upside and goaltending uh, are they're so profound that you could see this game going pretty similar to what we've seen out of Seattle uh, on several occasions already this season where they maybe have a 15 plus shot on goal advantage and still lose like four four one or or five two because the the scoring upside and the the finishing ability of Vancouver plus their goaltending edge uh, just gives them the advantage here so I think minus 130 is fine I wouldn't go much further than that on Vancouver, but I'll probably be with you there, Tim. Well, there you have it. Michael Eboff has his heart and his money on the New York Islanders. Nick Martin is on the under six and a half in Tampa Bay, Washington. And I finished us off with Vancouver to win at Seattle. Thank you to our partners over at Bet365. Good luck betting this loaded Thursday slate. Uh, hope you win your bets, unless, of course, they go against any of ours. Um, should be a fantastic night in the NHL. Have fun, everybody, and thank you again to our partners at Bet365.